<clears throat> Hi there, traders. This is Brad Goodwood with the Daily Market Insight for Wednesday, the 19th of July. All right. Now, have one of those busy days where every time I came back to the screens, there was something on, right? The uh, Kiwi CPI numbers earlier today in Asia and now the UK CPI numbers. Now, just focusing on the, uh, well, actually, let me just scroll back up here to the Kiwi CPI numbers. Tell you what, I've uh, got the wrong side of both of these, okay? CPI in New Zealand, expected lower numbers. They came out on the high side. And uh, what we saw, which is actually an interesting one, because we saw a uh, the Kiwi spike higher, and then the strong US dollar sort of tone just swallowed it up and it drifted lower. So that's a real uh, kick in the guts to many of the players out there. They would have gone long thinking, yeah, this is a great trade and with stops just below this trend line. Now, the US dollar downtrend is not over, right? But we are seeing a couple of ripples here um, created from the fundamentals, right? This is how you connect the dots. So if I just come back down here now, like we've just gone through the day, and this is one of these good days, right? All these good couple of days where we've got CPI numbers coming out across the board. Canadian numbers yesterday, Kiwi numbers, now C uh, UK numbers. Now the numbers, the seven, um, the core CPI number, seven point one was expected, okay, and that was the low end of expectations of the range, right? The um, the CPI number itself was eight, I think it was eight point one, and once again, that was the low end of the range. So we got numbers here that were outside the range, um, for whatever reason, the uh, you didn't get the lightning bolt on Metastock, but that's one thing, but. The uh, the key to actually, and what we've seen, okay, if I just come back to the charts, it's easy to show you what's happened here. The uh, You've seen a nice sort of clean out. It was around 25, 130.25 at the time of the release. And it's uh, you've seen a clean out down through 129.60. You know, I, the market was looking, the way it's reacted was looking for long for strong numbers still. And the way the Bank of England's been talking, you'd think it was, it was definitely going to be stronger, right? And if I come over here, if you have a look at the uh, sterling against a whole range of things, man, you can tell in my tone, I'm a little bit pissed off because I was actually got suckered in by the Bank of England looking for stronger numbers. The uh, the move here, okay, across the board, I've got sterling Swiss up here, but it's moved the same as well. You're seeing sterling just get belted. It's a clean out. To me, this is this tells me that the market was long leading into these numbers. And if anything, there's a big adjustment here on the forward guidance expected from the Bank of England. This is going to have an impact, right? They've been talking tough. Inflation not long ago was up around 10%. It's now under 7%, okay, 6.9%. Now, they're a long way from cutting rates, but it changes the picture. It's almost like we might be getting to the end of the interest rate hiking cycle, so you know what? Let's unload some uh, some pounds. And that's what we're seeing across the board here. Now, if you haven't uh, been a part of that, you know what? That trade is sort of on. If, if anything, it's sort of three quarters of the way over. Right now, the US dollar downtrend uh, is not over by any stretch. I mean, we've seen a stall here in the US dollar. Uh, and that obviously coincides with euro. We're waiting for not the last piece of the puzzle, but we're waiting for more fundamentals we hear from the Fed next week, but uh, as far as the local market goes, I mean, as I said, I was guessing like weaker numbers for the Kiwi it comes out strong. I'm looking for stronger numbers on the sterling. It was all set up for a nice move there too, and we get really weak numbers. So, you know what? I'm not into necessarily trying to um, do a breakout of these numbers, but I tell you what, depending on your view and aspect of the market, you can, uh, you, you could have made some some serious coin here. Now, if I just come over here, just focusing on where the, the trading opportunities are coming up. Now, we do have some inflation numbers coming out of the EU, but these are final um, numbers, right? So usually, excuse me, they've had a longer time to compile the numbers and they're usually more accurate, okay, or, or close to expectations. So that's something that... Um, you need to be aware of. And if I just come bring, uh, oh, hang on. is that new score? Yeah, it is. Um, new score over here. Okay, you can see all these uh, weak uh, UK numbers across the board. It's like, this is where you get the follow through in the price action. Usually there's some of these that are that come out a little bit stronger, but I tell you what, CPI, PPI, RPI, which is the retail price index, 
all blistered, right? They have just been punished. So we come down to the final numbers here. And as I was saying, funnily enough, I hadn't even had a look at this all day. The final numbers out of the EU are usually spot on. Now, the expectation is 5.5, the range 5.5 to 5.5, and the last number 5.5. It's like they're not even doing the numbers. They're just spitting out the uh, the last outcome. So that that event, okay, the EU numbers here, it's a non-event, right? As you can see, there's there's nothing much to look at. One thing I would uh, just have a little bit of a bow peep as we go into that North American session. Obviously, the uh, the crude stock numbers are, are a good one for if you're looking to trade oil or potentially CAD. But the US building permit numbers, right? Expected 1.49. And you've got a bit of a decent range there. So, you know, retail sales, US retail sales figures yesterday, a little bit buoyant or not, you know, not, not bad, put it that way. Um, so you want to look at these building permits because it tells you a lot about, you know, what what's people's confidence, how much, uh, you know, money has people got to sort of go into building permits and all these sorts of things. Then it has a flow on effect into construction, manufacturing, jobs, et cetera, et cetera. So just keep an eye on that number. That's the only real sort of... Um, well, we got housing starts here as well. Uh, that, that's actually worth having a look at, crude stocks. And that's pretty much it for today as far as just fundamental data. Now, of course, we can get some left field comments. Usually after a, uh, a major release, like say the UK CPI numbers, right? Like the UK media, they're, they're renowned for being vultures. They will be hounding the Bank of England. So give us a comment. What do, what do you think? Okay, and they'll be like the Bank of England will be sitting back going, "Oh, good, we've we've done our job. The pressure is off us." Okay, and that's that's what we're looking for. Now, just as you go into that European session, uh, just be aware, like the the U.S. equity futures are up. Right, early in the Asian day, we had a risk on profile where uh, U.S. equity futures were up, and these pairs down the bottom, Euro sterling, Aussie, Kiwi, were going up, and the dollar pairs were going down. Now that's reversed. And it's no surprise, okay, that the European session is doing something different. It is taking the lead. These instruments here are taking the lead from sterling. Okay, so as you can see, it's down. Oh, it's going to haunt me all day. Like 93 ticks, okay, on the on the sort of day. Uh, the rest of them, I mean, they're all against the dollar, right? So they just sort of follow suit. And the dollar pairs are up. This is pretty much based on this sterling number. And as you can see, one big number in a big center like you, uh, like the EU or UK, it's like a US dollar impacted. It p impacts all the major pairs and they all follow suit. So the market's been long Euro, sterling, Aussie, Kiwi. And I've been looking for opportunities to get long because the dollar is in this downtrend after those weak US CPI numbers. This may sort of balance things out a little bit, right? It takes the edge off the market. So... If you're trading through the uh, European or North American sessions, just be aware of, you know, a few of the things that are going on. Okay, keep an eye on, um, you know, where the activity is. Okay, you can obviously hear sterling pairs getting blundered, right? Makes you feel like an idiot. If, if you're like me looking for some stronger numbers there, I should have not, I didn't really assume it, but uh, anyway, it's going to bug me for the next couple of hours. The... Uh, just be aware the dollar is is going up, okay, at this point. And the uh, the other pairs are going down. So we're we having a little bit of a surge in dollar strength. Will it last? I don't know. And that's where the building permits numbers come in. If they come out strong, it may, you know, add some spice to the dollar move. Uh, just keep an eye on those US equity futures for uh, a bit of guidance. And as you can see already, Right, you got the Asian or the bulk of the Asian equities, except China, uh, going up, and the European equity futures also heading topside. Right, so it's a good day for um, for equities. Is it a good day for the risk on profile? Not at all. Right, because it's the dollar that's going with the equity markets, which is a bit more traditional. Right. Okay, guys. Well, that's it for me. Get into your charts. Have a look around. Okay, there's there's good trading opportunities across the board. Right, and that's why I'm not sort of trying to, like, um, what they call box orders. I mean, there's a whole different range of them, but um, just just follow the favorite instruments. Like, what I want to do over the next period of time is actually get people focused on instruments that they can associate with. So, if you're in the UK trading sterling against the sterling against the dollar and the crosses, makes sense. Okay, same for the EU. If you're in Europe, maybe sterling or 
euro. If you're in the US, well, you might have a favorite pair. Australasia, Aussie, Kiwi, yen. Uh, of course, the uh, I don't, don't want to lose it, leave out my good friends, the Canadians. Um, so that's where you are anyway. There's it's easy to focus on one band of um instruments as opposed to sort of following like the global markets and trying to trade everything. Okay, it makes sense, right? If you're focusing on sterling and you see sterling going down, well, you could have been a part of that move. I was focusing on it, didn't, didn't get it, but we can actually see what happens from here and look for retracements, uh, look for other UK data and those sorts of things. It's a bit easier just to follow one instrument than trying to follow all of them. Okay, and that's sort of generally what I do, but uh, I've been doing this for 35 years. All right, guys, have a good day. Um, I'll get back to you with the sort of trading opportunities for the day tomorrow. I just got a little bit caught up and I started sort of going through it. And with most of the, the numbers already out, it didn't make sense to sort of regurgitate uh, the outcomes. All right, uh, and that's pretty much it. All right, guys, have a good one. Cheerio.